Hi guys, this is Anno and we are going to play some European besides ball. Paradox was kind enough to give me a preview of the Rights of Man DLC. So we are going to use this opportunity to finally do a playthrough of uh, this game on my channel. Uh, let's uh, start. Uh, so I was thinking quite a lot uh, about which nation I should play and I think we are going to use Poland. Uh, Poland will be decent to look through all the new things that uh, come out in uh, Rights of Man. A new tax system, a new uh, way of dealing with your subjects, uh, some uh, um, new traits and monarch system, uh, all, all things like that. So uh, that should be fairly interesting. Uh, also, uh, well, it's a uh, Decently interesting uh, start for those of you who were only playing House of Iron 4 and either never played uh, and watched that on my channel and never played uh, EU4. I haven't played it in a while, so that should be a decent uh, way of getting you up to speed. And uh, on top of that, uh, as most of you probably know by now, I am from Poland, so I will be able to first of all pronounce everything and uh, uh, on top of that, uh, throw in a, a bit more of a, a historical trivia than usual uh, for those who, uh, who enjoy this kind of thing. Alright. So first things first, our starting situation. As Poland we start with uh, two vassals, Mazovia and Moldavia. Uh, Moldavia. Uh, and we will sh mm, shortly uh, be in a personal union uh, with... Okay. Uh, we, we are starting in an interregnum, but we uh, that will lead to a personal union over Lithuania. But about that in a sec. Uh, let's uh, click through... Uh, the the pop-ups. First of all, we need to give our give ourselves a set of uh, rivals. We will uh, take Hungary. That well, we we'll basically rival back uh, Denmark and Hungary, and we will uh, go for Titanic Order since Titanic Order is our main target and enemy in the early game. Uh, next thing is uh, missions. Uh, we have not gotten. Uh, our um, custom mission to, that would give us claims on all over this. Uh, but that's alright, we'll just take a, a mission to con conquer and calm, which will give us a claim on this and allow us to go to war outright. Uh, well, not really, because uh, since we are in an interregnum, that will need, uh, and this is basically treated as Regency Council, uh, we'll need to wait for that to go away. Uh, since we uh, already uh, embargoed them, we might as well, uh, well, rival them, we might as well embargo them uh, to add it to power projection. Uh, just that little bit. And uh, now let's take a look at our advisors before we continue. So. This is nice. So we do have a uh, theologian, always good. Especially which, uh, since we start with some uh, revolt risk in the Ruthenian uh, territory. Ah, uh, those are pretty poor. That's well. We'll need some. We need to try person might as well take it. Uh, mm, better relation over time. I think we'll go with better relation over time. That plus ten percent trade efficiency is. Uh, not enough to uh, justify it. Uh, we start with a pretty poor trade situation. It will change uh, once or if we conquer uh, the coast of Baltic, but uh, for now it wouldn't make much of a difference. Uh, so let's get for a, and go for a, a useful bonus. Now, our military. Uh, we'll leave that last one uh, for a bit. Uh, we need to move ball of port, all the forts. Uh, we start with only two, por uh, two forts, and uh, they are in a pretty terrible uh, spot. They are not going to defend uh, 
anything really. I mean, Krakow uh, will, uh, well, if we end up at war with Hungary, we'll just funnel enemies through Przemysl. But that's about it. And uh, the rest is. Uh, but uh, for now, we can definitely mobile them and uh, think about uh, using them later. Uh, that will save us some money. Same goes for root out that corruption. We'll uh, remove that for, for a time being, and uh, we will cut. Uh, mm, actually, we are not going to cut an army maintenance uh, because we may. Uh, we don't know when the event will spawn for our uh, for our union and for our king. Uh, so. We, we don't know when we will be able to, to, to finally uh, go to war, so let's uh, just sacrifice a few ducats and uh, see how that goes. Now, uh, the reason why I uh, cut down on corruption fighting is uh, the fact that uh, this king uh, will... Uh, well, okay, we'll talk about it in a sec. Um, we will also talk in a sec about great powers. Since we are not yet one, but that will uh, soon change. Lithuania is one, oddly enough. Uh, we are not uh, making the list. There are eight uh, of them, but as I mentioned, uh, let's uh, work with our estates first. So this is more important. Uh, so we start in a pretty dire situation when it comes to Schlachta or our nobility, uh, since they are. Uh, that's uh, with them at 65% and soon gaining another 5 due to our, uh, mm, well, will be a kingdom, so we'll get uh, another plus 5. Uh, at 70, they are almost, uh, they have almost enough influence to take over uh, the realm, uh, that we don't want. Uh, so basically, we cannot use anything out of here, and specifically, we cannot uh, gain uh, 40 tradition, which is a uh, pain in the ass. Uh, for the tradition in general, I mean, uh, which most of the nations can, we cannot. Uh, Burgers have uh, very low uh, influence, so they won't be able to, to grant us anything useful, and uh, even if you were to improve their loyalty, that difference is kind of uh, small. Uh, oh, it seems like there is some, there are some problems with uh, localization, the German one, and Entwicklungskosten is basically development cost, uh, but we are not going to develop anything just yet. And uh, clergy, on the other hand, uh, grants us uh, can grant us very nice bonuses, and we are going to actually use it extensively. We are going to seek the support to increase the uh, loyalty and uh, uh, the influence. We are going to recruit a minister, and we are going to send emissary to a pope. Uh, what that will do is uh, we will be able to get 150 administrative power, which administrative power is, uh, will be extremely important for us uh, at the beginning of the game. And uh, we'll wait three years before using that. Uh, to enjoy those bonuses from having over uh, over 18 because that costs uh, 20 loyalty. We'll get uh, back to that later. Uh, that shouldn't be too dangerous, uh, um, especially since we can uh, cut down on the uh, possessions if anything goes haywire. And uh, the reason, one of the reasons I went for it is the fact that we will be able to get a uh, level 2 administrative uh, advisor for half a cost. As you can see here, instead of paying uh, four monthly, we'll only pay two monthly. And uh, we really, really need that administrative power early on. Uh, so uh, that allows us to, take, uh, pa to pass advancement of religion act. We are not going to do that because uh, I don't think that uh, global national unrest of one is worth uh, one missionary strength. Definitely not, so we are going to uh, click that away. Uh, as for uh, 
well, we can't use our uh, missionary just yet, so let's uh, actually unpause and wait for the event to pop up while looking who is going to uh, get a, an alliance with Teutons, hopefully not Hungary. Uh, from what I've seen in my test games, it's either Denmark and Hung or Hungary uh, from the major nations. Uh, oh. uh, Bohemia wants an alliance. We have a spot for one alliance, and I think we'll uh, we'll actually take Bohemia. Another option is Brandenburg, but Bohemia is more powerful. Uh, let's cut down to three, shall we? Uh, and they, as usual, uh, have. Uh, Take an alliance with Livonian Order. And uh, well, now we have to wait if they uh, ally with someone big before we can actually go to war against them. Oh, no. Uh, we also want to uh, build up our military to the brim. Uh, four. And one more. We have enough uh, cavalry, we can't really afford much. Uh, so we will just uh, use the rest uh, of it as infantry for the time being. Later our cavalry will be uh, fairly powerful, but not just yet. Uh, uh, so we are not going to actually use that, uh, take the royal marriage, because uh, Bohemia also has a set of events that uh, shuffle. Uh, they will are most likely to lose this king within a year, so... We'll revisit the idea of royal marriage in uh, in a year or so. Don't want to to spend uh, uh, legitimacy on that. Come on. So the problem with this event uh, is that it's random. It can take bit, uh, somewhere between five, uh, uh, between one day and three years or so. So. Oh, okay, this is bad. Uh, let's... Right, let's just send 3,000 3, away. How much? Yeah, this is a supply limit of 13, eh? Uh, actually, we, we want some units there. To just uh, grab new mark and two shell uh, outright. Come on. Very allied with. Still only one in all. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, let's get the alliance. I'm not. I'm pretty sure it doesn't affect it, but. And we can also. Um. Start improving relations. Uh, I could start working on the. Uh, well, might as well, I guess. Uh, let's build a spy network. Does anything happen? No. Uh, the king is still alive. Okay, let's. In the meantime, let's talk about. Uh, no, I'm not going to accept royal marriage. Thank you. And um, so. This uh, whole system works similarly to what is in the Victoria 2 uh, game, or Victoria 1, I think, as well. Basically, four, eight more most powerful nations get, get to be uh, great powers. It is counted pretty easily by uh, adding up uh, the development, uh, and then, uh, on top of that, half of the development of the subjects. I mean, seriously, come on with this, uh, with this event. Of the development of the subject, uh, we, as you can see, are not making a cut, but uh, one as Lithuania becomes our subject. Uh, subject. Come on, Mazovia, what are you doing? Here we go. It will. Uh, is fabricated on Przemysl. Well, actually, we could have uh, had a claim already. I started it outright, my bad. 
usually it takes. I, I've played a, a few test games. Ooh, and even got Cardinal. Alright. Uh, okay, let's uh, talk about technology then, since this is not popping now. Uh, whole technology system got revamped in this uh, in this uh, patch. Oh, another thing, so we got a minstrel. Uh, I think we are going to spend our uh, our administrative power to boost stability uh, by one, and uh, then use him to get uh, stability to two. And uh, that will allow us to actually convert Louvre. And boosting stability when it's uh, positive, it's, it's more expensive. So uh, doing this, uh, doing it this way around is better. Now, uh, what you can see here is technology costs, and uh, you may be surprised that, for example, Mamelukes and Ming have a one hundred percent technology costs. Well, that's because uh, now everyone's technology is uh, has a basic cost of 100, but uh, the costs may then raise if they fail to uh, swiftly implement uh, new institutions that pop up. Uh, Renaissance, colonialism, printing press, global trade, manufacturers, and enlightenment. So uh, most of the world starts with uh, feudalism, uh, of course, hordes do not, and uh, as you can see here, Timorids do not. And uh, what that means is, uh, uh, and uh, because of that, if you uh, hover over here, uh, the technology cost is 150. Because for every, uh, you get up to 50 penalty for every institution you failed to. Uh... Oh, okay. We'll talk about that in a sec. So, on the death of the childless king Vladislav III, on the battlefield of Varna, the death, not on the death, split the union between Poland and Hungary and left Poland in an interregnum. His brother Kazimierz, the Grand Duke of Lithuania, was asked by the Polish nobility to assume the throne, but found the conditions unacceptable. In 1447, after three years of negotiations, Kazimierz was finally crowned King of Poland on his own terms and ruled both kingdoms as a union. So, uh, you might have wondered why the game starts on the 11th of November uh, on, uh, in 1444, and that's because on the, the day before, on the 10th of November, there was a battle of Varna. That was the culmination of last uh, crusade the, against the Ottomans that uh, uh, aimed at uh, saving Byzantium. And in the Battle of Varna, somewhere around here, uh, crusading forces of mostly Poland, Hungary, uh, Serbia, Bosnia, uh, and even uh, some Bulgarian nobles uh, got uh, defeated. And uh, King Władysław. Uh, that was at the time king of both Hungary and Poland. Hungary also starts in an interregnum. Uh, he got killed at the field, uh, as you can see here. And uh, now his brother uh, can assume the throne. And uh, well, we can refuse, but we definitely want uh, that to happen. And that will also make and create an elective monarchy. All right, so. I was thinking about it and I guess I will read that one as well because this is an interesting tidbit and honestly that those are only two big uh, big events so uh, let's just power through it shall we. On the death of the last Piast monarch in 1470, that is uh, Kazimir the Great, Kazimierz Wielki, uh, if, for those who play uh, Civilization V, uh, Polish nobles uh, began drawing on ancient claims and historical precedent to assert their independence from the monarchy. At first, only a small part of Shlachta, or local class, would assert its privilege to choose the next king. But eventually, the right to elect the ruler of Poland was extended to all Polish nobles. Keep in mind that in Poland, nobility was inherited by all the children of an, of an entitled person, so it is at its peak, half a million Poles, uh, up to over 10% of the society, uh, could climb a voice in the election. By far the widest possible franchise, oh, franchise, I'm not sure, so fresh really, in Renaissance Europe and uh, probably the largest democratic system 
until American and French republics. Uh, true royal elections began in uh, 1573 at the election of Henry of Valois, that is after the death of the last uh, Jagiellon monarch, which, so it's a bit weird that we get this so early. Uh, here after, instead waiting for, uh, for example, Lithuanian uh, Jagiellon dynasty to, to go away. Uh, of Henry of Valois, uh, since uh, foreign princes were uh, climbing the throne of France anyway, why not uh, have the noble choose among them? During the Commonwealth period, the kings of Poland and grand princes of Lithuania were elected by noble gatherings at fields of Wola, just outside Warsaw. Tens of thousands of nobles would be expected to attend and the richest magnates would mingle with the poorest count in exchanges of favors and votes. And basically in Poland there were no official titles like Count, Duke and whatnot, and all the nobles had equal rights. Uh, of course there were more powerful ones that were more uh, that were richer but uh, uh, by the law they were all the same. Uh, while the election was going on, royal power would be vested in the interregs and temporary regent, usually the primate of Warsaw, who would oversee the voting. All right, so we have became an elective monarchy, which is a massive pain in the ass, as we will uh, soon learn. Okay, but what is more important is that we can finally declare war. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, Teutons were kind enough not to ally themselves with uh, Denmark, which uh, well may won't make the war much easier because Denmark, for some reason, uh, and uh, well, the problem with Denmark is that they also control Sweden and Norway. Uh, Denmark, in my test games, wasn't sending any units, uh, not really, so that wasn't a problem. But the problem is that uh, we would have to siege a lot before the war ends. So now uh, we still don't have enough, uh, uh, enough uh, what is intel points uh, to to get another claim. We need twenty five. Uh, so we'll just uh, declare war over calm. Okay, uh, we do, however, uh, have enough to recruit a general, which is going to be a very bad general, I'm afraid, because we have 4.6 army tradition. I uh, compare that, so mm, anything that has any tick in, uh, a tick in the siege or a tick in uh, what was uh, was their face. Uh, Shock is good for me. Uh, let's roll the dice. Ugh. Okay, well, maybe I said I, it's good. This, this is a bloody terrible, but yeah, I might as well. Alright, so we're going to uh, quickly capture all of that and wait for them to join us. Uh, meantime, uh, I'll actually. You, you guys go and reinforce this. Uh, so uh, all of our allies, uh, well, all of our subjects uh, joined the war. We are not going to call in uh, Bohemia. We'd have to uh, tell them that we will give them land, but that's a uh, pain in the ass. So uh, and we can do it on our own with our subjects. Now, uh, with that opportunity, let's look at the changes to subject menu. So, uh, on top of all the information you get and all of that things that we'll discuss later, uh, we also, we, the most important part is, of course, uh, the new settings. Uh, first of which is uh, no setting. Uh, AI will do as it pleases. Uh, second one is the supportive. They will basically uh, try to stick close to us and support us uh, if we get into the battle. That's how it works. Aggressive, uh, they will. Uh, just do uh, campaigns of their own. Uh, passive, they will not fight, uh, avoid combat and uh, stay in their own lands. Uh, defensive, they will uh, only operate in the allied territory and so or territory of all of uh, our allies uh, in this case. Well, that's kind of self-explanatory. And then siege, they will focus on sieging down enemy forts. And for the time being, since we are yet to fight a battle, we will uh, put anyone on support, if I'd say. Uh, because we... Um, there is another 
major. Okay, let's slow it down, shall we? Uh, oh, right. And uh, oh, before we continue, uh, another two things. So, as you can see, there is uh, an orange hue around our crest. Uh, yeah, that means that we are a great power. Uh, because half of the development of Lithuania got added to our score, we jumped from uh, I don't know, 15, 10 uh, to the third position. And that gives us a few, few things. First of all, a bunch of bonuses uh, that you can see here. Uh, prestige decay, minus 1%. Oh, nice. Institution embracement cost. I will discuss that in a sec. And uh, third, a lot, so as you can see, of power projection 20. Uh, it's basically uh, if you're first, you get 24, second, 22, third, 20, and so on and so forth. And that means that we are very, very close to getting ourselves a, a 50, uh, 50 power projection and bonuses to the gain in, uh, in administration costs. Now, uh, that uh, institution and embracing. So you can only embrace the institution when at least one of the provinces uh, in your um, in your nation has it. Uh, so, for example, a Renaissance will spawn somewhere in northern Italy and will keep uh, uh, spreading province by province by province. So uh, it will probably at first uh, arrive uh, in uh, Krakow. Uh, or Novi Sanj, and uh, once that happens, uh, we uh, will be able to embrace it. And it's basically um, a lot of money uh, that gets lower the more provinces actually embrace it in your in your kingdom. So that basically allows us to, allows us to save up a few bucks, no, no, nothing major. Another uh, another thing, however, is a set of great power political action. Uh, for example, we can take on foreign debt. Uh, let's assume that uh, we have an ally that we want to, to go to war with us, but they are in debt. So instead of just throwing the g gifts at them, hoping that it will be enough, we can uh, uh, take on their debt, uh, paying it uh, it all off, um, and then and this uh, thus enabling them to join our war. Uh, but we'll also get uh, proper trust and. Uh, what, what was it? Uh, and favors, right? And favors with them. Uh, we can influence the nation, which is basically paying, uh, paying outright to get some influence and favors, and uh, I think basically just trust and uh, relations with them. We can intervene in the war, but uh, about that later on, or we can threaten enemies, uh, threaten someone to break the alliance with uh, with another nation. For example, we could. Uh, if we were, for example, to threaten uh, Hungary to break the alliance with Austria, they won't do that, but... Uh, uh, well, if we were powerful enough, they would... Uh, there was a chance that uh, if we would see that it will accept, uh, they would accept, and both sides would uh, hate our guts for it, uh, and we would have a truce with the uh, the partner we were forcing to break it. So, uh, yeah, you 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 force uh, you are not forcing to. If you are if you were to attack Austria, we need to force Hungary to break, not the other way around. War, however, so let's we are already at half an hour, so but let's continue. Ah, no, we can't. Another thing, another new thing. The kings and their traits. So our Kazimierz Jagiellon is uh, four for one. I mean, okay, it's a decent ish. Uh, I, I am aware we have. I'm, we start with an administrative focus, and uh, I will leave it, leave it so. Uh, to form a Commonwealth, we need a metric shit ton of uh, of administrative, uh, and we are going for the first uh, idea group that is administrative. So we will need a lot of it. Uh, his traits. Uh, he's a scholar, which uh, will lower cost of our technology by five percent, and he is uncorruptible, which will lower uh, yearly corruption by minus 0.5. That's why I wasn't really uh, throwing money at the problem. 
and uh, next trade will gain in uh, 19 years. He is only 18 years old, so hopefully he will <laughs> live for a while because those are some damn good trades, even with the lack of military skill. And our heir also has, uh, which is I think his brother, uh, also has, uh, or uncle or something. Uh, it's a, it's not an actual uh, historical person, just a, a random, and he has uh, foreign spy detection, which is nothing to write home about. And he will also be getting trades every once in a while. Alright. So interesting part is about uh, uh, combat uh, here. Now, if you are besieging a fort, uh, you are... Uh, okay, I can go there, of course. Uh, if you are besieging a fort, and you are being attacked, where is the army? Did they send it to to, to Livonian order? What's up with that? Well, uh, point being that uh, if they were to attack us here, uh, that we are besieging where there is the fort, uh, there we would be considered the attacker. So if there was a river around it, uh, even though they were crossing the river, they would end up. Uh, uh, we would end up uh, having the crossing penalty, which uh, makes the whole uh, defense thing much more, uh, much more powerful. Especially makes forts much more powerful because you can just chill behind them and uh, attack the enemies when they are besieging. Actually, I think it's 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 a it's a very uh, very powerful change from what I've seen. Okay, so. Enemies aren't here for whatever reason, so let's uh, at least change. Uh, well, I guess let's change everyone to uh, to sieging and see see how that goes. You can see they are fairly fast at, at uh, reacting. Except you, what are you doing here? Do I change them? I have. Okay, so yeah, they, they, they went north. Interesting. Just to make sure we are... Yeah, we are only at war with them, and not you know, with Denmark or Hungary jumping in, incidentally. I kind of wish to, 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 to showcase that attack, but they seem to have backed off for a time being. We'll see how that goes. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see that. All right. As you can see, uh, we are fighting in the woods. So uh, there is, uh, and uh, Lithuania is considered uh, an attacker here, which may actually uh, be problematic for them since. Uh, for some reason they are not supporting them. Let's change it for change them to attacking, I guess. Maybe they will come. Okay, seems like that's kinda of worked. Will they be in there in time? Well they they were. Oh, and there are another army is here. Okay, I will just leave the oh, so Moldavia got Actually wiped. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. Basically, <laughs> I was hoping to see that and that thing to show it. Uh, I imagine there is an enemy army here, or in Königberg. Oh, never mind. They are here. Let's switch Lithuania to supportive. We can. Uh, so we cannot. Uh, we cannot go there because. Uh, uh, there are two, well, actually three forts around it. Uh, we need to, to, to capture at least uh, two of those three to be able to, to, to move the, to this province. <clears throat> Let's see if they, uh, if they attack us. Alright, so that should be enough. So let's uh, actually switch uh, Lithuania back and Mazovia and Moldavia to with this. They should uh, besiege Mama uh, or something.
They're really coming here. Alright, so uh, another. They should support us, as they will. And that, that should be the end of them, actually. This, uh, AI seems to, to, to act weirdly. I'm not sure if that's uh, an actual problem with the patch or it has been like that for a while, but. Uh, Uh, from my, I, I've been actually, well, training for this, uh, um, uh, and reacquainting myself with EU4 for, for quite a while. Uh, over the last month, I played like 50 hours or so. Uh, and I don't know, uh, AI seemed more aggressive and, uh, more dangerous. Or maybe I was just very, very rusty, but, uh, yeah. I don't know, they, they seem to just uh, sit around and then randomly attack in places where they don't really have much of a chance. Okay, so we come up with this. Uh, we still cannot uh, go there, but we can move here and then for a cleaning bag. Actually, since... Okay, so uh, let's talk about what we are going to take. We are going to, I think, take either those three provinces. Our point here is to get them under 100% so we can later vassalize them in the uh, in the next war. And so we can't take too much because we will end up uh, with a coalition against us. And I think that's enough. Yeah, that should be enough. Only the one on order, Riga and Teutonic Order will be in coalition. We can live with that. Uh, same if we were to take Newmark. Yeah, so uh, we can... Uh, we either take Danzig, uh, which is an important uh, province for us. First of all, it's a very uh, good province uh, trade-wise with both Osuari and the uh, trade center. But it is uh, also required uh, for for us to form a Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, and uh, we want we need to have a corridor. And there is a danger that uh, Pomerania will. And come along and steal it from uh, from Teutons if we uh, wreck them too much, uh, too much. And uh, taking dancing back from the, uh, from Pomerania would be a pain in the ass because they are part of an AHRE and would have to fight with Austria for it, which is never a good thing. So uh, taking those four provinces here would be nice because we could easily uh, give three of them to, to Mazovia and that we will be annexing uh, in a few years and uh, well that would uh, save us some administrative points for a price of diplomatic ones but I think we need to secure Danzig for ourselves. Okay, so uh, we can get ourselves a new cardinal or get uh, administrative power. Uh, I mean, cardinals are nice. Uh, what was it? I, I never remember. Well, I do sometimes, but uh, we have how many? I believe we have one active cardinal, right? Mm -hmm. What was the bonus again? I think it's here, wasn't it? Here it is, yes. Uh, is it just PayPal and Fluis? But yeah, maybe I was... I think I'm missing, mixing things up from Veritas at 42 the mod. Okay, uh, anyway, we are, we are definitely taking administrative power. We really need it. Uh, okay, so here you see another attack. Uh, terrain is once again in... Uh, uh, those are woods, aren't they? Yeah, so terrain is once again in their favor. Oh, and another thing is, we are not fighting a lot, uh, or at all, uh, but uh, now your leaders can also gain trades after the battle. We haven't got any, but... Uh, have we looted this? Not not yet. Uh, let's continue. Alright, uh, we are at 40 minutes, so... I will just make a cut here because uh, the embargo lifts in like an hour, so I need to quickly upload it, and then we will uh, we will continue. I was actually I actually recorded this uh, whole one hour episode earlier, but I was actually 
well, the, there was a problem with the recording basically, and so I, I just had to do this once again. If I uh, sounded tired for the uh, at the beginning, that's because I just uh, finished uh, talking for an hour straight. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys are enjoying it. There will be uh, two or three more episodes today, and uh, at least one, possibly two episodes uh, throughout the rest of the weekend, and uh, then we will uh, slow down to the standard one per day or one every two days. Uh, hope you guys are enjoying. If you haven't, uh, if you just uh, stumbled upon it, uh, looking for rights of men content, go ahead and check some other stuff of mine. Uh, there is no. EU4, but I play a lot of very high level uh, House Final 4, so you may find that enjoyable. And there will be more EU4 in the future. Next, uh, uh, next campaign after this one will be Ethiopia, actually. Uh, probably someone will play Ethiopia because they got a uh, nice religion, but still, I want to play Ethiopia, and there will be that campaign uh, later this month. So, thanks for watching, and see you next time in an hour. I believe, yeah, next episode will be out an hour after this, so yeah, look out for that.